Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting rational equation. We have x squared and x over 1 plus x quantity squared equals 1. And we're going to be solving for x values. I'll be presenting two methods and let's start with the first one. For my first method, I want to use brute force. So just expand everything. Now, after squaring the fraction or the quotient, I can go ahead and make a common denominator, but let me just go ahead and expand 1 plus x squared first. It's 1 plus 2x plus x squared, or you could do it the other way around. And now I'm going to multiply everything by x squared. So in other words, to make a common denominator, that'll be x squared plus 2x cubed plus x to the fourth. Notice that I'm multiplying this by x squared plus x squared divided by x squared plus 2x plus 1, I just flipped it, equals 1. And since that's equal to 1, we can just go ahead and cross multiply. In other words, the numerator equals the denominator. Make sense? Now let's go ahead and write the highest powers first, x to the fourth plus 2x cubed. By the way, if you add these two things, you get 2x squared, and that's equal to x squared plus 2x plus 1. Obviously, I could have just canceled out one of the x squares, but let's do that now by subtraction. We're going to subtract everything from the left-hand side. So it's going to be x to the fourth power plus 2x cubed. 2x squared minus x squared is just 1x squared minus 2x minus 1 equals 0. Nice. Maybe not so nice. It's a quintic. Aha. You can use the formula, right? There's a quintic formula, which you don't want to know. Trust me. It's, I mean, did I say quintic? Sorry. I meant quartic. It's a quartic equation because of the fourth power. There is a quartic formula, there is no quintic formula, obviously, but it's the, even the quartic formula is quite complicated. If you want to know what that looks like, go ahead and look it up. I think there's a picture you can find on Wikipedia. Who knows? Maybe somewhere else too. So we could just go ahead and try to solve it, but trust me, it's going to be painful. There's actually a better way to do it. So let's go ahead and take a look. The alternative is much, much better. So I'm going to go ahead and isolate these two, the first two terms and everything else I can put on the right hand side. Of, co of course, I need to change the sign. And now we got to do a little bit of math and magic. What is that supposed to mean? We need to find a number or some expression to add to both sides to make the left hand side a perfect square. And that's actually found easily if you just add x squared to both sides then you will have a perfect square on the right hand side because this becomes x squared plus x squared. If you didn't see that, you could go ahead and factor out an x squared. You could hopefully see it that way, but you kind of need to get used to these kinds of things. You know, there's no, not really a clear way to be able to see these things. It just comes through practice. Okay. But something interesting happens on the right hand side. x squared cancels out. So we end up with something really weird. Because look at the left hand side it's a perfect square but the right hand side is not a perfect square because it's linear how can it be right well it can be i mean but we're not going to be able to process it like in terms of variables right maybe for certain x values yes it could be a perfect square who knows so we need to add more terms so we're going to start with this okay on the left hand side and I, and I just want to thank Nadia Fan for this method because I didn't know that before. So we're going to be adding something to both sides. And that'll be plus. So we're going to add 2k times x squared plus x and then k squared. And then on the right hand side, I need to do the same thing. So let's go ahead and move this whole thing to the left a little bit so we can have room. So now we're going to go ahead and Add the same thing to both sides. That's going to be 2k x squared plus x. Even with that, I'm going to have little room because I write too big sometimes. But what happened was on the left hand side, you now have a perfect square and that's just perfect. Look at that. It is x squared plus x plus k quantity squared. If you don't see that, call this m, whatever, you'll get m squared plus 2k m plus k squared. And I'm hoping that you can recognize it as m plus k quantity squared, which gives you the same thing with more work. But uh, substitution is always good if you don't get this right away. So that's fine. Now, let's rearrange, it, rearrange the terms on the right hand side. 
we get 2kx squared. And then we have 2kx plus 2x, which is 2k plus 2x. And then I have plus k squared plus 1. Now, at this point, we got a perfect square on both sides. Why? Because the right-hand side is now a quadratic. And yes, that can be a perfect square if its discriminant is 0. In other words, we have one root as opposed to two roots or no solutions, right? So what does that, what does that mean, though? Uh, well, it can mean a couple of different things. Like, I mean, you can go through the delta process, which I'll show you, or you can try to guess it. Let's do the delta first because it's more painful, okay? So no pain, no gain. To be able to do the delta, we're going to do b squared minus 4ac. And that's supposed to equal 0. Now, we have something that we can do, like factor out a 2 and square it. So that's going to be like 4 times k plus 1 squared. And let's put this on the right-hand side. 4 times 2k times k squared plus 1. Nice, because the 4 cancels out. We have a much simpler equation. k squared plus 2k plus 1 equals 2k cubed plus 2k. Let's put everything on the, maybe keep it on the right-hand side. It's probably better. I want to make this positive. So we have 2k cubed. Bring the k squared as a minus sign. These two cancel out. Uh-oh, that's pretty interesting, right? Now, one of the things that I always mention, almost always mention in my videos, if you have a polynomial, check the sum of the coefficients first. Why? Because look at this. 2 minus 1 minus 1 is 0. You know what that means? It means k equals 1 is a solution because it satisfies it. So that's a good thing. k equals 1 works. Yay! Let's go back and plug it in. Wait a minute. Why does k equals 1 work? Because 2k is 2, so it's not even like a perfect square. By the way, I'm not talking about 2k and ba. It's just 2k. I mean, 2k or not 2k. Oh, well, it didn't work. Sorry about that. But idea is 2x squared is not a perfect square. Well, who said so? It is. Square root of 2, if you go to the irrational world, it's going to work. But let's go ahead and approach it differently. I mean, k equals 1 works. You know that. Now let's go ahead and verify it a little differently. Something that will help you here. Again, that's something that I learned from Nadia Fan and possibly other viewers. They share with me these beautiful ideas. Always feel free to share what you know is that I notice here that this, uh, there's a common factor of 2 and there's a 2 here. So why not factor out a 2 and write this as kx squared plus k plus 1x plus k squared plus 1 all over 2. Now this doesn't matter. The constant term can be taken care of as long as k squared plus 1 is even. Uh-oh, that means k is odd. You know what that means? k equals 1 might work because that makes it 1x squared, which is good. But at the same time, it makes it 2. So you get x squared plus 2x plus 1, which is indeed a perfect square. You see that? It's beautiful. So let's go ahead and now replace k with 1 on both sides and we'll get to the same point. Let me show you real quick. We found out in two ways that k is equal to 1. Great. Now let's go ahead and plug it in and take advantage. k equals 1 implies that x squared plus x plus 1 squared is equal to 2 times x squared plus 2x plus 1, as you saw. And now we can make it even better because now notice that the right-hand side can be written as square root of 2 multiplied by x plus 1 quantity squared. By quantity, I mean the product. Make sense? Now we have two squares on both sides or either side. So we can kind of square root both sides and look at the plus minus because if a squared is equal to b squared, that applies two things from absolute values, a equals b or a equals negative b, right? Think about it. So now we have the following solutions. x squared plus x plus 1 is equal to root 2 times x plus 1. Let's go ahead and work it out and we'll get, get back to the negative solution. I mean the negative version. This will become uh, root 2x plus root 2. And then we can go ahead and put everything on the same side like 1 minus root 2 is going to be the coefficient of x. And then 1 minus root 2 will be the constant term. Now we can solve this using the quadratic formula, negative b root 2 minus 1 plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 1 minus root 2 squared, minus 4ac, that's going to be 4 times that. And if you simplify this, you should get a solution. I'm not going to do it because I'll show you the solutions from Wolfram Alpha, which was able to solve it, by the way. Good job. All right, so the other solution is very similar, so I'm going to leave it uh, as an exercise, but just go with the negative b 
and you'll get the solution. Make sense? Okay, great. Let's go and talk about the second method because it's really cool. And But you'll get to decide which one is better, right? So x squared plus x over 1 plus x. And by the way, let me know which method you like better and why. Don't just say, yeah, I like the first one. So here's how the second method works. It's really cool because it's applicable to many problems like this, especially the ones that appear on math competitions. Because this problem is, what is it called? The, the right word is contrived, right? Okay. It's been designed that way. So I'm going to call this Y, and you're like, why are you doing it? Don't question why. And now when I do that, of course, I get something interesting from here. X equals Y plus YX. Let's get to it later because I want to write the result. So by assuming that, I get X squared plus Y squared equals 1. I mean, who would just go from a single variable to multiple variables, right? Like this. We had a single variable, but we couldn't solve it because that was too hard. You've seen it, right? The core tick was crazy, sort of. But now we have a system which is easy to solve. You know how? Take the first equation, which is this one, and I'm going to write it as x minus y squared. Notice I didn't pick x plus y. Plus, because that's a minus sign, plus 2xy equals 1. We know that x minus y is the same as xy, so why not replace xy with x minus y and call it d? So you get d squared plus 2d, or not 2d. Again, that didn't work, but anyways, you get the idea, equals 1. And now this is d plus 1 squared. If you add 1 to both sides, think about it, completing the square stuff, you'll get root 2. Oops, I square rooted too early. That's a 2. From here, we get d plus 1 equals plus minus root 2, and then d becomes negative 1 plus minus root 2. Well, what is d? d is x minus y, and then xy is also that, because they're equal, you know that, right? And from here, you get a system of equations, you can solve it, that's a lot of work. Doesn't matter, we get the same solutions, let me show you what the solutions are, we'll finish with that. Sorry about the length of the video, this turns out to be a long video because of the two solution methods, I hope you don't mind. Anyways. Here's a graph. As you can see, there are two real solutions to this. And ta-da, here's the real solutions. And here's the, as you can see, it's very radical. Here's the non-real or complex solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.